Hi there, I'm Gord from Element Eco Design here in Vernon, British Columbia, and today we're going to be discussing how to make a rain barrel. So why are we harvesting water in the first place? I've got three reasons. Number one, it's a free resource. Did you know that a thousand foot square foot roof can actually capture 20,000 gallons a year? That's 75,000 liters. Two, your plants love it. It's full of micronutrients that your plants will respond to. Number three, collecting your rainwater diverts that water from the storm drains, which is better for the environment because it reduces pollutions in rivers, lakes, and streams. All right, now that we're informed, let's get started on building our rain barrel. First thing we have to do is go get some materials. So let's get on our way. Once you've sourced your rain barrels, the next thing you need to do is track down all of your equipment to build the rain barrel. We've included a real handy PDF on the Regional District of North Okanagan website that you can refer to for all of your parts lists. Okay, so we've made it back from the hardware stores and we've got all our materials. Don't be surprised if you don't find everything at one place. I usually find about 90% of what I'm looking at at a good hardware store. Other than that, I have to check out plumbing supply stores, garden centers, or specialty pool shops for things like the bulkhead fittings and some of the faucets. Well, now let's go take a look at what we bought. We'll have a list of all of our equipment and the tools we'll need, and we'll get started with the rain barrel. So the first thing we have to do is locate a 55 gallon rain barrel. And there's many ways you can do this. The best one is probably looking on local online classifieds and you should be able to find these barrels between $20 and $30. The cost difference is going to be for a solid top or a removable lid. I prefer the removable lid because it is easier to clean, but the choice is completely up to you. Today we're gonna to go through how to build a rain barrel for a solid top. So let's get started. So we need a tape measure, a tool for marking, a flathead screwdriver, a file or a rasp, we need our hole saws, inch and a half hole saw, three inch hole saw, five and a quarter inch hole saw, and of course a drill to drill the holes. If you don't have a larger hole saw, you can also use a jigsaw to cut the larger holes. In addition to these tools, we need our equipment. So we have our six inch flower pots, our bulkhead fitting, the inch and a half bulkhead fitting, and the three quarter inch bulkhead fitting. We've got our three quarter inch ball valve faucet and Teflon tape. We've got our mosquito screen, our downspout attachment, and our overflow hose with accompanying valve and fittings. So now that we've got our rain barrel, we need to clean it out. And we need to always look at where we're sourcing our rain barrels from. So you want to ask the question of what was the rain barrel used for? And they just need a quick rinse out and a cleaning. So there are certain environmentally friendly products that you can use, such as Castile soap, or you can make your own mixture of a biodegradable dish soap mixed with equal parts of vinegar and water. And it works excellent for cleaning these barrels out. Now we're going to drill our first hole. This is where we're going to insert our three quarter inch bulkhead fitting and faucet. And we start by measuring a spot four inches from the bottom of the barrel and marking that with your felt pen. Now that we've got our hole marked, we're going to tip the barrel on its side so it's in a more stable position. And we're going to drill our first hole. Now that we've got our first hole drilled, we'll switch bits and move up to our three inch hole saw and we'll cut our overflow in. Now we're just gonna mark out our overflow. So now we're gonna measure four and a half inches down to mark the center of our bulkhead fitting for our next hole. So once again, we're gonna flip the barrel over so it's in a safe position to work on. It's important to remember drill safety when you're drilling these holes. These bits can have a lot of kickback and a lot of torque, so you really want to brace yourselves before drilling, especially the larger holes. If you have any burrs left over after drilling your holes, you can always use a wood rasp or a similar rasp to file off the burrs and make it a nice clean opening. So 
So now we're going to drill our third hole. We're just going to change hole saw bits here. And now we're going up to a much bigger hole saw. And it's really to, important to remember that these can have a lot of kickback and you really want to make sure that you're stable in the position and you really want to hold on. This is also a reason that people often use a jigsaw for this part of the drain barrel. Uh, the benefit of the hole saw is that you will get a much cleaner hole, but the jigsaw is a lot easier and people are a lot more comfortable with it. So if you are using a hole saw, just remember to be careful and take your time. So now we've got our faucet hole and we've also got our overflow hole. Now the third hole we're going to drill is where our downspout enters the rain barrel and gives us our water that we're wanting to harvest. And we're going to drill that right here at the back of the rain barrel so it's nice and tight up against the house and there's very little room for adjustment. So before we drill this hole, we want to make sure we are ready for it. And I use a technique called feathering it in. I allow the pilot screw to be dug in and then I progressively increase the speed of the drill and allow the hole saw to start digging in. And we do this so that because the hole saw can grip sometimes and it can torque your wrist and we want to be safe. Now we're going to install our three quarter inch bulkhead fitting for our faucet in the bottom hole. To do this we need two common items that most Canadians have, a hockey stick and duct tape. So we need something sticky to bring the bottom end of the bulkhead fitting down to that hole because some barrels don't come with removable lids. So what we're going to do is reverse tape the duct tape so it's sticky side out, put the end of the bulkhead fitting attached to it and then just slide it into the hole at the bottom and then we'll be able to thread that fitting into place. So the bulkhead fitting is an adapter that comes in two pieces and each side has a fitting to keep the water in and prevent leaks. And this is reverse threaded so you're going to be going the opposite direction that you'd be used to to take it apart and it's going to be the threaded side that we're going to stick to the back of the hockey stick and then thread through the bottom. And then we will attach this part from the outside. So we just want to go ahead and stick that to the duct tape. Next, we take our hockey stick and put the bulkhead fitting in through our top hole. Now we can just slowly remove the hockey stick and the bulkhead fitting should stay in place. Then we can reach down and screw the nut into the rest of the bulkhead fitting. Remember the bulkhead fitting comes with two washers, one for the inside, one for the outside. Now, just get the fitting, the nut close to the fitting, grab onto it, push a finger through, put the washer on, and then thread on the nut. And remember, it's reverse thread, so it's going to be going the opposite way that most threads usually do. And then just tighten, tighten until it's good and snug. So now we're going to install our three quarter inch ball valve faucet. And first, we've got to put some Teflon tape around it around the threads here and then thread it into the bulkhead fitting. And you might want to wear gloves for this part because some of these threads can be extremely sharp and it's very easy to get cut. And remember, safety first. Now we're going to wrap the Teflon around our faucet and we do this to prevent leaks and give, ensure good contact between the faucet and the bulkhead. And you want to do this the right way so that you don't strip the Teflon off as you're screwing the valve into the bulkhead fitting. So what I do, I hold the faucet in my right hand Put the Teflon tape on and wrap around this way. So now we're just going to screw the three quarter inch ball valve into the bulkhead fitting. So now we're going to install our second inch and a half bulkhead fitting in through the overflow. And the reason why we're using an inch and a half overflow is because we found with the rains in the Okanagan, um, if we get a huge rain event, which we often do, it will overflow faster than a common garden hose can keep up. So we need the added diameter to ensure that we get even distribution of our over overflow. And ensure each side has a washer. Then we just take the threaded end through the overflow through the inlet hole and put it through the overflow and tighten up the bulkhead fitting.
Now we're going to apply an inch and a half adapter to, uh, that goes from our bulkhead fitting into our overflow hose. I've applied the Teflon tape again and then we simply screw that in to the bulkhead fitting until it's tight. Then we can take our hose clamp and our overflow hose and we can attach these once the barrel is in its final position. So now we're going to assemble our filtration system for where our inlet comes in and feeds the water through. And this is made from simple products you can find around the home or at any garden supply center. It is simply two six inch flower pots and a piece of mosquito screen at least 10 inches by 10 inches. So now we're just going to take our mosquito screen and we're going to apply it to the bottom of the first flower pot and then simply insert that into the second flower pot. And the reason I love this screen so much is because it's easy to clean and it's easy to apply. And then once that is set, we just put it inside our hole and we're ready for connection. So now we need to select our site. We want to use a site that's got an existing downspout in place and then we want to prepare the site so we've got a nice level base to work off of. And in this case we're going to elevate the rain barrel slightly on some cinder blocks so we've got a little bit more gravity pressure and it's easier for us to connect a hose. So let's start prepping the site. When selecting a site you want to make sure that you've got a nice level base. So what we want to do is use a level and a rake to prepare the site. We want to start by removing any organic material and then backfilling if necessary with either self-compacting material such as gravel or sand and then double check level so we have a nice even surface to set our cinder blocks on. Now we'll just put our cinder blocks into place. So now that we've got the site prepared, we put our cinder blocks in place, we double check level and then we can bring the rain barrel over and put it into position. Now we're just going to bring our rain barrel over to our cinder blocks and set it in place so the faucet's facing out and the overflow is sitting at 90 to that and we can address our downspout. Now we're going to put the downspout adapter into position slightly above where it needs to be and make a line where we need to cut it. So now we need to get the water from our downspout into our inlet and to do that we're going to install our flexible adapter. What this does is it attaches to your downspout and then you can extend it and direct it into your inlet. There are several tools you can use to cut the downspout. I'm going to be using a reciprocating saw with a metal cutting blade. You can also use a hacksaw or anything else to cut the metal that you have available on site. So now we're going to go ahead and cut where we made our line. So now we're just going to put the flexible adapter over the downspout and put it into place. Make sure it's on. Bend it into position, ensuring that you've got a downslope. And then we're just going to use a couple half inch screws to hold this downspout and flexible adapter in place. Now that we have water ready to come into our rain barrel, we have to divert the excess water away. And to do that, we're going to install our overflow hose. So we're going to take the excess water and divert it away from the house. Another thing you could do is connect this overflow to another rain barrel so you can have a series of rain barrels. And that equals more storage. So now we're just testing our system to make sure we've got no leaks in our rain barrel and to make sure our gutter's working correctly. <clears throat> what we're seeing is that we're also catching some material in here. We have an asphalt roof and that's why we're using the screen. The screen also has the added benefit of keeping the mosquito population under control so you're not leaving stagnant water around for mosquito breeding. Now we put on our hose clamp, insert the hose, and then we just tighten the hose clamp over top of the hose until it's snug. And our overflow is ready to go. Now we're just going to run our overflow down to this mulch basin of this fruit tree. That way we're putting our water to its most productive use. Now you can always cover this up or bury it to keep it away as a tripping hazard or you can run it alongside your house along a garden bed putting perforated holes in it and that'll help water your garden bed passively whenever there's a rainstorm. So now that we've created our rain barrel, assembled it, and attached it to our downspout, we're ready to start collecting and using our water. 
There's many different options for distribution, including drip irrigation through gravity feed, direct hose link, or filling up your watering can. So we can start using this water, and the benefit of using rainwater is it's got more nutrients, your plants are going to love it, it's going to be easier on your pocketbook, and you're using a free resource that falls from the sky anyways. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I'd like to thank the Okanagan Basin Water Board for sponsoring this project. I'd also like to thank the Regional District of North Okanagan. If you'd like detailed instructions as well as a material list, please download this PDF at www.rdno.ca forward slash water. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.